Hello, and welcome back to part two of the Deals Cauldron. Just to explain where we left off, um, I don't know how it happened, but when I put my tripod and my camera and my 7200 mil lens on the rocks further back up the river, I don't know how, because all the weight was at the front of the camera, but as you saw on the last video, it just crashed back, hit the rocks and then fell in the river. So my camera and my lens totally bust, full of water. I've tried to dry them out, it makes no difference. There's so much condensation and water in the lens. It's totally destroyed. Camera is all condensated on the LCD panel, won't even turn on. So luckily, and this is probably a bit of advice for anybody. I'm an absolute amateur. I am not a professional photographer in any way. It still pays to have insurance because you just never know what might happen. Lucky for me, I was insured and I've had a immediate replacements. My insurance company has been amazing. I've got my new camera and I've got my new lens. So I've come back tonight to finish off what I started. What I've done is I've followed the forest further down the river. So I'm closer to the top of the Dale's Cauldron. And where we last fell, finished off, I was taking photographs of two logs heading down to the De Gorge. So I'm now behind those two logs. And I've got a deep gorge straight in front of me. A lot of it's kind of inhibited by the trees. But what I'll do is I'll try and take some photos just so we can try and get an idea of what was behind those trees when I was taking the photos at that very last point where everything had to stop. So I'm glad I'm back. I'm really thankful to my insurance company and uh, let's see how we crack on with the new equipment. Okay, so I'm above uh, the gorge. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to take a couple of shots of the river flowing down below me. There's a nice canopy of trees in front of me as well. So what I might do is a kind of four shot panoramic so that I can get a wider scene. Um, as you can see, I'm just taking my time. I've set up the camera so my front of my tripod legs sitting straight in front of me. So I've got balance here. I'm holding on to it like dear life. My legs are shaking, but hopefully we can get over that feeling fairly soon. So first of all, I'm going to focus in on the centre of the falls and I've got a sixth of a second F8 and ISO 200 so I'll put my hand in front of this picture I'll take my first image I've centred into the, the centre of the image I've made sure my polarizer has flattened out the highlights in the water and I'm just turning the camera around. I'll take my four shots. And then hopefully that'll be quite a nice panoramic image. So as I've got the camera here, if I turn this round, there's some ferns below. What I'm going to do is probably take a couple of shots here where I'll focus in on the water and then I'm going to focus in on those ferns and then I'll, because they're quite nice because the ferns are just acting like a big fan shape. So if I move my focal point over to the those ferns focus on the ferns and then that way I've got those fern, ferns like a fan that can come into the image all right
right, so just step back from the falls. But quite quickly, this tree in front of me, the sun was hitting, there's two small ferns growing off the top of the branch. And I was just, I've lost, I've lost the light. So what I might do is just wait a couple of minutes and see if the sun will come back and light that back up. Now, what I'm doing, because this is such a dark area, I've, I'm trying to find the ferns. So I've increased my ISO to let a lot of light in so that I can actually see them. And then that allows me to focus in on the ferns so that when the light comes back, I can keep a lower ISO so I can get the detail and then I'll take that shot. But what I might do is uh, exposure compensation and I might be able to bring in the various different exposures to give us a kind of HDRE effect. I'm just checking. Hmm. Yep, that might be quite a nice image. And maybe the sun's not coming back. So what I'll do is I'll just look around um, away from the water for now and I'll see what images are, li are available within the woods here and we'll make the best of what we've got. Okay, so I've walked down the path and I'm not near the tourist um, platform, but I'm walking my way towards the tourist platform. But as I've walked my way around the woods, there's quite an opening here in front of the falls. So I've got the Deals Cauldron. I'm right above the Deals Cauldron where I am. Now, what I'll do... So I've got the... I'm above the, the falls. And what I can see is I can just see enough water coming down I can see the swirl pot that the Deal Cauldron is named after, as in the Devil's Kettle. And I can see where the water's eroded and carved out that kettle-type shape um, in the falls. I can see the base of the falls, but then other than that, I can't really see very much because it's, uh, it's mostly trees all around it. I'm standing in the most mental muck uh, that I've ever been in. So what I'll do is I'll take I'll take some shots and there's also what looks like um, there's ferns growing over some of the rock. I don't know if this lens will be able to capture it that well. But I'll take some shots. If they turn out, I'll share them. If not, it's got quite a Jurassic-y look, um, quite prehistoric. But yeah, let's focus on the photo. I'm just bringing up, I'm at ISO 500 here. And let me just increase that shutter speed just to speed it up because the water's going quite fast. I focused in on the water. I'm just checking. Yep, so what I might do is a quick exposure compensation and then bring those together just to see what type of effect that gives me later on. platform and there's a plaque in front of me and it says this footpath was constructed by 2TP 202FD SQNRE goodness gracious no idea what that means uh, June 1984 um, I'll try and look that up and try and explain it if not it's going to be a mystery so I've put the camera in the portrait mode and I've actually 
up to my ISO just a bit to ISO 160. I've focused in on the falls as they're coming through the top of the gorge. The only challenge is it's a really restricted view, so you can't really see very much. Um, I will So what I'll do, because it's such a restricted view, I'll need to move over to my left to get different viewpoints of the falls. So the, the top of the gorge is coming down, but it's, it's kind of obscured through a cra um, the tightness of the gorge and the way that the water's cut through it. So if I move to the left, I'll get shots of the lower falls coming down. But what I'll try and do here just now is a panoramic shot and I'll put my hand in front of the camera so that I know where I've started the panel. And then I'll take a panoramic shot and I'll try and dip the camera down as far as I can go to try and get as much of a complete picture as possible. So I'm looking round about me. It's it is quite prehistoric looking with all the ferns and the moss and the trees. Some really nice ferns growing out the side of the trees. So what I might do is change my lens. Here we go again. I'll change my lens and then we'll see if we can get some close-up shots of the ferns on the trees and maybe other areas of interest, um, like little trees growing next to and in front of the falls. It's absolutely roasting down here. It must be over 20 degrees. It's really, really warm. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the camera over. So I'm now in front of the basin of the falls and what I've done is I've set up, there's a, the base of the falls is, there's like three, four different levels of the falls but the top elevation of the falls is completely concealed behind those rocks in the, the gorge so it's coming through a really, really small hole. So what I'm trying to do is get as much of the base of the falls in the image as I possibly can. I'm just going to check that I've got that water right. Right, so what I might do is speed up the shutter speed a bit. So I'm going to make it a 13th of a second just to see if that makes any difference. And I'll zoom in. Nope, I'll go the other way. I had it at an eighth of a second, so I'll put it at a fifth of a second. I've got F8 and I've got ISO 160 just because it's really dark down here what I might do oh that's I go back to my eighth of a second a wee bit to the right because there's a small tree right in front of me that I'll make quite a nice image. I'm just going to focus in on the tree. Jeez, oh, it's really, really sensitive. So I've upped the ISO to 200. I've got F8 and I've got an eighth of a second. And that looks, that does look really nice. So while I'm taking this photo, I've also spotted those ferns that I thought looked pretty prehistoric earlier on are above the water. So what, I, what I'll do is I'm going to focus in on those ferns and just see if 
if that makes a good image. Okay, so I've switched lenses, I've put the big lens on. So what I'm doing is I'm just focusing in on the bottom of the falls. There's actually a tree that's uh, fallen down above the falls. So I'm just zooming in just to see if I can get that tree in focus. And then what I plan to do is I'll try and take some shots of the tree, the, the fallen tree's branch, with the water below it. It's, it's a nice location. It might be better in the winter when there's less foliage around because there's a lot of plants and there's a lot of areas of interest that are all on top of each other. So when it comes to trying to make a composition to fit a nice image, I'm kind of struggling because there's a lot of overlap. So there's not a lot of separation between trees and plants and ferns. They're very much kind of jungle effect together. So what, I'm just checking. So I'm going to do a pan, using the big lens, I'm going to do a panoramic because I'm, I can zoom right in and I'll get a tighter crop of the falls. So I'm just checking my focal distance. is just in case the other lens doesn't do those jurassic -y ferns that I was mentioning earlier any justice. I'm just going to move over here to the corner. I'm going to get them in focus because the colours in there are really nice. They're kind of brown and green. Take that shot. Yep, that could be a nice shot. There's a lot of hanging branches there so what I could do Oh my tripod sliding a wee bit. I'll use the overhang and I'll position the ferns to the top right of the image. I've still got the same focal point. That could be quite a nice wee shot. The other images I've seen round about me is there's some ferns growing off the trees that have been backlit by the clouds and the light. So I'll take some shots in that direction and I'll just keep looking around um, because I've actually, I've came to the spot where I wanted to be in the first video. So we're now here and I'll make best use of the image opportunities because I keep seeing different trees, different leaves. The light's changing all the time. What I'm going to try now is, I'm going to do probably quite a big panoramic shot using the big lens. So I'm going to put my hand in front of the camera. I'm just going to double check, because a man, a man came down and he started talking to me. 
so I had to stop what I was doing. So I'm just going to double check my focus. Right, so I'll probably end up doing maybe about 12 to 16 shots here. Um, but again, with the magic of the video and the editing, you'll just see the final image. And then that way you don't need to sit and watch me go through this whole process of taking 12 to 16 images. Okay, so I've spotted um, some small pink flowers. So I'm just setting up my shot. I've zoomed straight in, I'm at an eighth of a second F8 and ISO 125. And that, that looks quite a nice, a nice shot. I just hope it turns out. It's difficult to tell because they're so small. It's difficult to tell if that's going to be a good shot or not. There's a couple over there. Um, there's one, a little one down on the bottom here that might be quite nice. It's just making sure I've got the right composition with them because I want what I want to do is get the, the background quite dark because the colours on the flower are very, very prominent. Yep, so they're nice. Um, there's a couple over there. So what I'll do is I'll focus over here just because the background is quite interesting in some of these shots. So <clears throat> let me focus in, see if I can get focused, take my shot. Finally managed to finish this video, I, uh, and I managed to get to the deal's cauldron. So hopefully the images turn out. I'm just having a wee coffee, and I'll have a cookie. But it's absolutely boiling. But I need a wee rest. So I've walked a quarter of a mile all the way down, and I've walked a quarter of a mile all the way back. So if anybody's thinking about coming up to the deal's cauldron then it's well worth it and it's well worth coming down to the edge of the river because there's some really nice images that hopefully you saw and hopefully you liked in part one and here in part two it's really just about the falls and some of the surrounding foliage so hopefully we can make that into a video but yeah the deal's cauldron for anybody is coming what the deal cauldron actually means is the devil's kettle and the reason it got the name of the Devil's Kettle is over the hundreds of thousands of years as the water's been flowing down the river it's been eaten into the rock in the gorge and through time it's just carved what looks like a pot and that's hence why it's got the name Kettle in, into the gorge and to be fair this time of year it's, pr it's quite difficult to make it out because because of all the growth in the trees and the ferns there's quite a lot of foliage in the way so Winter time's probably best, and I could probably come back in the snow when it could be nice, and there could be a lot more water. So it'll be some pretty cool surges that must come down the river and through the, the Deal's Cauldron as well. But the, there is a legend attached to the Deal's Cauldron, and the legend is about um, brownies, or what we call water elves in Scotland. And the, the mischievous water elf in this area um, picked on servants uh, hundreds of years ago that weren't behaving or did the wrong thing because water elves and brownies are very, very conscious of the masters that they serve. They tend to look after houses and households. They tend to look after farms and stables, but they only tend to come out at night, so they're not seen. But if, if they detect any lazy people or any lazy activity then they can turn mischievous and things can go terribly wrong. So that is the legend around the devil's kettle or the deal's cauldron. I hope you do come and visit. It's actually a really nice area. Um, so 
I'm going to finish the video here. A really thanks for watching and just to let everybody know my camera has been replaced. I'm back, I'm back um, to be able to take photos again. To be fair, it's been a, I've been a really conscious today, so things have probably been a wee bit slower than normal just because I've been taking extra precautions and checking and double checking everything because the last thing I need is another disaster like that to happen. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do because you know it's free. And thank you, and here's to the next video.